This part of the test will measure your writing ability in an academic environment. It will last around 60 minutes. You will write two responses. In the first task, which is called an integrated question, you will read a passage and then listen to a lecture. After that, you will answer a question based on what you read and heard. In the second task, which is called an independent question, you will answer a question based on your own knowledge and experience. Writing Task 1 Integrated Question For this task, you will read a passage and then hear a lecture about an academic topic. You will have three minutes to read the passage. You may take notes during the reading and the listening. The reading passage will be shown again during the time when you are supposed to write, but you will listen to the lecture only once. You will have 20 minutes to write your response. Effective responses are usually between 150 to 225 words. You have 3 minutes to read. Start reading now. Now listen to the lecture. Current scientific research regarding rising sea levels has clearly proven, without any room for doubt, that the sea level is rising rapidly and that human activity is responsible. If we truly analyze the data, we can see a pretty grim future if we don't act now. First of all, Melting ice caps are not important when it comes to sea level rise. Even though this causes other problems, what is most important is the melting of permafrost. Permafrost is the ice that is on land 
and usually never melts. Think of Greenland and northern Siberia. These places have huge, let's call them, deposits of ice. The melting of permafrost is what causes a rise in sea level, because the ice is usually on land and displaces nothing in the water. So when it melts, the resulting water is in addition to the volume already located in the oceans. It is true that NASA has stated that it can't account for some of the sea level rise, and that the process of how it happens is still somewhat unclear, but it would be inaccurate to claim that they haven't scientifically accounted for the majority of the rise. They have clearly proven a connection between melting permafrost and the ocean swallowing more and more land. Some studies have also suggested that our current measurements underestimate just how much water is trapped in the permafrost. So this might account for the source of the rise we can't quite pinpoint. And the reason for the permafrost's melting is due to human activity. The ice would have stayed frozen in place for the next 10,000 years had we not burned so many fossil fuels, which caused the heating of our atmosphere through the greenhouse effect. This heating is why permafrost is predicted to melt 100 times faster than it normally would. So there is little unknown and nothing natural about the situation. Lastly, when it comes to humans having time to adjust to the changing sea level, we can unequivocally state that is not the case. We don't have time, not if we want to avoid a dramatic shift in our world. Most of our economy and population is located on or close to the sea, and it is predicted that we will lose 20% of the landmass where human activity takes place. We need to act now. Summarize the points made in the lecture, being sure to explain how they cast doubt on specific points made in the reading passage. You have 20 minutes to write. Start writing now. You can see that here we have five paragraphs and the first paragraph is basically an introductory paragraph. Basically here I give the skeleton of what I'm gonna talk about, how I'm gonna uh, explain everything, how what the professor says in the lecture, how it contradicts the reading passage. So I started off by saying what the professor uh, thinks, what she claims, and that is in the first two sentences. And then in the third sentence of the first paragraph, I talk about the passage. Now the professor says that the sea level is rising fast and that humans are responsible. And uh, she also says that uh, uh, for the most part, we understand why this is happening and that the situation in the future will be bad. And with the third sentence of this paragraph, I simply say that the passage um, is uh, completely in opposition to this, that uh, in the reading passage you can find that this is a natural process, that we don't understand it, and that it will not cause any problems for us. So one thing about the reading and the listening is that the points are organized in the same order. What the reading pass what the first point of the reading passage is also the first point that the professor addresses. You can mix it up a little bit, but I find it's easier to go uh, in the same order, just like the reading passage or the lecture that you will hear. Sometimes they will be mixed up, but it's better to follow the order of one or the other if they are mixed up. I found that it makes it easier to write. So in the next paragraph, I talk about the first point. Now the passage claims that uh, the melting ice caps are not the problem since they are already in the water. And in the reading passage, you can find that uh, uh, they give an example of uh, ice cubes in water. And through this example, they tried to explain why the melting ice caps are not the problem because they are already in the water. Now this example with the 
ice cubes in the water it's not important for us so we don't have to focus on it it's not important it's unimportant information so we don't need to waste our time writing about it so with this one sentence you explain what the reading passage claims now the professor doesn't uh, disagree with this uh, she says that the the melting ice caps are not the problem but that the melting permafrost is the real problem because it's already on land and that the melting um, and that the melting of this ice um, adds to the quantity of water in the oceans now I used the word quantity even though the professor talked about even though the professor used the word volume it's best to use synonyms because by using synonyms you show that you understand this and that your vocabulary is good and that you use it in a good way the second point that is uh, discussed is NASA or what does NASA know now in this first sentence I paraphrase what the professor and the reading passage state with this one sentence I paraphrase what they are talking about and instead of saying um, and, and instead of just repeating the professor's words where she pretty much claims that maybe NASA doesn't know everything and there I say that uh, NASA doesn't have the full picture but that it's not completely uh, in the dark or that it pretty much doesn't know anything like the passage says so with this first sentence here of this paragraph I quickly um, explain what the position is of the lecture and of the passage and I show how they are in contradiction with the next sentence I express what uh, NASA knows or that it knows most uh, that it uh, that it understands where most of this rise is coming from and the professor used the word majority but I use the phrase most of again using a synonym and with the last two sentences I introduce the idea of uh, where the where uh, the NASA's where NASA's uh, lack of understanding might come from that uh, because we simply don't know that because maybe we simply don't know how much water is frozen in the permafrost that this might um, account for the missing water and I say that this might be a responsible for that I don't use the word account but I use the word responsible in the next passage I talk about uh, the reason for it so in the previous one we talked about the source and here we talk about the reason so the reason for the melting of the permafrost is because of the burning of the fossil fuels the professor states that uh, the permafrost would melt hundred times slower and that simply we are responsible because we are the ones who are burning the fossil fuels so this is not part of uh, a natural process like it's claimed in the passage and again here I show that uh, contradiction and in the last paragraph uh, or the last point that is discussed is how uh, fast this will be and uh, will it have consequences for us so the passage claims that uh, we have enough time but the lecture says that this is not true and by just writing that uh, this will be fast and painful I say um, I simply state that uh, it will be really fast and painful meaning that it will be really bad for us and we will lose one-fifth of our territory now the professor said 20 percent so that's one-fifth and by uh, explaining it this way I show that I really understand it and the last sentence is about the reading passage what the reading passage states writing task 2 independent question for this task you will write an essay in response to a question that asks you to state, explain, and support your opinion on a topic or issue. Your essay will be scored based on the quality of your writing. This includes how you develop and organize ideas, and how you use the language to express those ideas. 
you will have 30 minutes to write your response. Effective responses are usually at least 300 words. Do you agree or disagree with the following statement? The increase in automation will lead to people losing their jobs. You have 30 minutes to write. Start writing now. So the question that is posed before us is whether we agree or disagree with uh, the statement that uh, people will lose their jobs because of automation. Now, I take the position that uh, it will not happen. That, uh, And I actually say that I think that because of this, we will, uh, that the number of job positions will increase. So when I wrote my notes, two examples came to mind. I thought that I could talk about the banks because they already experienced some form of automation and this actually increased the number of uh, the jobs and uh, that I can also talk about the future and there I could talk about the trucking industry or the transportation industry. So in the first paragraph I immediately uh, give that skeleton of what I'm going to talk about. I start with we can see that some people have lost their jobs and their current positions due to the advancement of automation but if we take a closer look at the past trends if we take a closer look at the past trends we could say that this is actually something that increased the number of jobs and it will probably do the same in the future so here I say this because I'm thinking about the banks that I will talk about so those are those past trends and when I say that it will probably uh, do the same in the future I'm again thinking about the banks and about the transportation industry. In my second paragraph uh, which is quite long actually I talk about these two examples. I start off by saying that automation frees people from the monotonous and repetitive jobs and allows them to do work that is more creative and more complex. And after this statement, I immediately go into my example. And this is the example that is about bank clerks. I use this example because I'm drawing from my own knowledge and my own experience. And this is what actually happened with the banks. Now, there, this is not a quiz about your knowledge and the information that you're giving them might not even be true, but it's not important. They want to see how you defend your position, how you express yourself, how you express yourself and how you express your thoughts, that it's clear and concise. You don't have to write some peer review article about anything. But anyway, let's continue on. So before the ATMs, uh, people had to go to the bank to get their money. But now with the ATMs, um, you could just get your money from the machine. You don't have to interact with people. But this didn't make the banks fire a lot of people. And everybody thought that this was going to happen. But again, the opposite happened. Uh, people, more people started working for the bank. So the existing labor force was shifted to the function of convincing people to get loans. Now here I use the phrase labor force um, and before I used the, the word people. Now the reason why you should change your words to refer to the same thing is because you cannot always say workers, workers, workers. You can repeat one word or one phrase two times but you should really use synonyms to show that you have a good vocabulary and that your command of your vocabulary is good. So here I might say that your vocabulary is good and that your use of those words is also good. So I basically state that uh, the existing labor force was shifted to the function of convincing people to get loans. And then uh, the bank became more profitable because these people did work which was creative and it brought the banks more money. 
and since the bank earned more money as a result of that they started hiring more people so this is what happened this is the past and now I talk about the future that further automation for the banks will go in the direction of better programs that will that will identify new opportunities and these opportunities will probably require more manpower in order to be fully taken advantage of and again I use a different word manpower instead of labor force and then I continue to talk about the second example and uh, now I talk about the trucking industry and what I'm saying here I don't know that this will happen but this is my opinion so it's not important whether it will actually happen whether your predictions are good whether the person who will grade your essay whether they will think it's good what is important is how you write about it so I say that we can imagine that those people will go into the logistics and that they will load stuff onto the trucks that will be automated that um, they will not lose their jobs but that the drivers will go into the logistics and will load stuff on the trucks and I write that this will allow the transport industry to follow the same pattern like the banks and that more and that more people will be hired uh, for loading cargo onto the trucks which will lead to more profits and again which will lead to more people being hired in the next paragraph I talk about the doors that the automation will open when an enterprise moves their labor force to uh, new tasks they will need to provide them with a new type of infrastructure whether it's in physical or digital form whether they will have to have new tools or whether they will have to have new programs and here again I talk about the banks they needed to hire more electricians and programmers to maintain those ATMs and to give bank clerks uh, new tools with which to work now when I look at this instead of bank clerks I could have said um, bank employees but it's not that big of a problem you don't always have to um, Put synonyms but it is good it will give you a higher score again so these tools were computers and advanced software so the uh, automation created new job opportunities in other fields basically it connected electricians and programmers to banks and this gave those people more jobs and then in the last paragraph I give a, a quick um, a quick conclusion that it might seem as though jobs will be lost but the truth is that we will just see a change and that automation will open new doors for us so I summarized really quickly what I talked about in my essay